This is going to be a hopefully brief explanation on how I pick colors and why um, color picking from photos can be a very bad idea. All of the colors on this have been color picked from this photograph. And even though they've been color picked, they look very dull and uninteresting. And the reason for that is that in a photograph, it's usually a living person, and there's so much variation that even with color picking, you can't possibly get all the nuances and details that you have in the actual photo onto your digital painting. And the reason for that is that, like, if you zoom in, there's just so many, and each one is contributing to what you see in the final image. And replicating that in a digital painting is extremely time-consuming, and people that can do it are very skilled. They've probably been practicing it for years. And um, there's just a whole niche of artists where that's all they do, and that's perfectly fine. But if you're someone who's not trying to exactly replicate a photo, you just like the colors that are in it, it can be just a tremendous waste of your time because you end up looking, having something that looks like this. It looks like mud. It looks like you picked from a photograph and you didn't know what you were doing. You didn't know how the colors got there, how they worked. You don't know why it looks all gray and stuff. And so I'm just going to explain how I can get the feeling of this photo onto this sketch without color picking. So I'm going to take all this off, take that off, take that off, and start brand new. For me, I have been slowly collecting colors that I like over the years. Um, I picked all of these myself. It's just it's kind of thrown up there, you can tell. Um, I always like to start with a sort of pinkish or bluish gray. Sometimes I'll do something like this. And it just gives me a nice base to build off of. This photo has a very kind of peachy undertone to the skin, so I'm going to stick with this very slightly purple magenta gray. And I want to make it clear that I'm still learning too. This might not be my process at all in a year or two, or even maybe a month from now. But for right now, it's what works for me, it's what I know, and I know how to navigate to getting to the final product I like using this process. And I want to point out that usually this goes on top of this and I'll put it on multiply, but since I have I don't have a white background right now, I'm just putting it underneath. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. And my uh my sketch is hard light. Hard light mode. So I have my base tone. You're probably looking at it and thinking that looks nothing like the photo, but it will in the end. I'm just going to bring these over here. And uh, for most skin tones, even if I'm drawing like a darker skin, this is usually how I begin. Um, again, just because it's something that I know and I know how to navigate using this process. So it's just my preference. Right now, I'm looking at the photo and I'm seeing, you know, what areas are slightly darker, where the highlights are, where it goes more gray or more pink or more purple. And since she's wearing a black uh, turtleneck, I'm just going to ignore this area, but you would apply it as you do on the face if you were drawing the skin on the body as well. Don't worry too much at this point about getting it looking exactly like it does in the photo because it'll all be cleared up once you start painting. And also you can layer colors on top. You know, instead of going straight for a coral pink, you can um put down maybe like a yellowish color and then maybe layer like a slightly purple color on top. And if it ends up too saturated, you could also put like a, a little bit of a gray. And basically just keep layering it. 
And if you have a textured brush like I'm using right now, that also helps to give variation like what you would see in the actual photograph rather than just being a solid color all the way through. The subtle variations can be very important to uh, leading something to look a lot nicer than if just, it was just blocks of the same color. And with my process, I usually, well, I always, after I put colors on in this way, I will paint on top of everything. So it doesn't have to be perfect right now. Because I know that while I'm painting it, I can always change things. Like um, if I need to lighten an area or darken an area, I can do that easily just because I'm going to cover it all up anyway. When you're drawing something, it's good to vary the tones in it. Like if you're drawing something brown, as I always did with the eyes just now, I'm using both a very green brown, very orange green brown, and then a very hot brown. It's very red. You can even use some actual, actual green browns in there as well. Just right there. And again, it just adds a layer of dimension that you would simply be missing if you just made it all one color. It might take longer, and it probably definitely takes longer to learn how to do it in a way that satisfies you. But um, I think it's worth it. At this point, I think we're about ready to start painting on top. 